it was only a few weeks ago that we told you that the Democrats were very worried. The New York Times published a piece quoting various Democrat officials who were concerned but had hoped that a conviction of Trump would improve Biden's chances of winning. Well, Trump was convicted, and this is what happened. It did not move the needle. Really not at all. And now top party leaders are again sounding the alarm. This from Axios today. Senior Democrats, including some of President Biden's aides, are increasingly dubious about his theory for victory in November, which relies on voter concerns about January 6, political violence, democracy, and Donald Trump's character. Well, of course, <laughs> they're right to be concerned. This is all failing. The top concerns of voters remain the economy, border, inflation, the cost of everything. And Biden has made it all worse. Everything they try for their strategy to turn it all around crashes and burns. Remember, they tried to ship Biden over to Normandy so he would look real presidential. Instead, he looked lost. Then they touted a new border enforcement approach. But come on, we all saw through that fakery. That order is in effect today, too, and it is having little to zero impact. If anything, it's gotten busier out here in San Diego sector. Where are you from? Mauritania. Mauritania. Where are you from? What country? What country? Is that China? China. China. Where are you guys from? Guatemala. Mexico, Guatemala. Where are you from? China. China. Where are you from? Guatemala. Guatemala. And yesterday, they are trying to sway or even increase their uninspired base. And that required Biden to fire up the Amnesty Express. These young people known as dreamers have been able to live and learn out of the shadows, out of the shadows. We're much better and stronger nation because of dreamers. Ah, to heck with Americans' dreams. This is just more confirmation that this bunch does not care. So much for working class Joe. And now Trump has his wind, the wind at his back. The big betting markets all have him as the odds-on favorite. That's something we didn't even see in 2016. Interesting. And voters consistently rank him way above Biden on the issues that matter. This is vexing. It's perplexing. With all those hardcore liberals, like Chuck Todd, who wrote one of the biggest developments of this campaign and the biggest difference between 2016 and 2020 and today is the lack of fear of another Donald Trump term. This lack of fear of Trump could be a real stumbling block as they try to galvanize voters to remember what Trump's presidency was really like. And some MSNBC reporters, well, they do know the truth when pressed. Folks remember, forget the politics of it, they remember a life that they lived, you know, again, outside of politics before the pandemic. And for Donald Trump and for Laura Trump, right there, heralding folks back to memories of their own lives at that point in time versus whatever they are experiencing life now. And there is something to that here. Yeah, yeah you think? Wait, but wait a second. That's all too logical. What about the midterms? He's still is on a losing streak. He Why should we believe that this moment is different, that suddenly President Biden and the Democrats are so much weaker today? So Donald Trump's rhetoric even, and even his sort of swagger looks more like 2016. Trump in Detroit um, and, and those events he did, he was oddly loose. He was trying to be funny. If he somehow lo drops the grievance, uh, but he could end up looking more like that 2016 candidate Maybe. where he's the outside disruptor. Yeah, Katie didn't know what to that do, do with that comment. Chuck Todd was actually making a really good point. And I actually think it can look a little bit more like 1984. Forget 2016. And I'm not saying this could be a landslide, 49 state landslide. That's probably not possible. But that most Americans today simply believe that Trump's policies were better. And that he'd be the best on the economy, best on foreign policy, and obviously best on immigration. And thus, they think, the voters, Trump, not Biden, deserves four more years. Now, you should expect that there's going to be a lot of finger pointing on how Biden's posse made huge mistakes in communications and PR and huge errors with political strategy. But frankly, I think most of that is unfair. Biden's favored to lose and it's not because KJP is bad, although she is bad. He's on track to lose because his policies have failed and failed miserably. And his cultural policies, oh my God, they just reveal a deeply anti-American, anti-Christian, anti-girls and women core in the Democrat Party. 
There's just no spinning that. And we know Biden's economic policies are lowering our standard of living. Look, they're borrowing $1.9 trillion a year. And they're losing Ukraine. Our military is short on recruits. Consumer spending is slowing. So how is the comm shop supposed to message any of that? And we all know, and the Democrats know, that Biden himself is literally coming apart, physically, of course, and cognitively. We all see it. And the comms people couldn't ignore the memory care moments Biden keeps having. Instead, they played the only card they have. Try to blame Republicans for misinformation and disinformation, literally telling you that the unedited videos that you're watching aren't real and aren't fair to show. Cheap fake clips went viral on social media and were picked up by some news outlets. Uh, take a look at this clip, for example. It shows Biden and other world leaders watching a skydiving demonstration before the president is seen walking away and looking in another direction. Outlets uh, claimed that uh, he was sort of just aimlessly wandering away. Now, CBS has actually deleted from circulation that video. They say that they slapped a warning on the wrong video, though. OK, thank you, comrades. Now, Democrats want you to believe that the real crisis, it's not that we have a president who looks like he belongs at Madame Tussauds, but that a video is circulating of his freeze-ups and his aimless wandering. What we are seeing in the last few weeks is really the steady stream of videos that are targeting uh, President Biden and, in particular, taking aim at his age. Right, and they are being picked up by news outlets that know they're fakes and uh, or know that they are misleading, but post them anyway. Is, is this amazing or what? Zero inquiry by journalists about Biden's actual condition. Do they have any curiosity about that whatsoever? Any? And yeah, this is all coordinated. Calling it cheap fakes, that is something that came from directly from uh, the media outlets and calling it that, the fact checkers and calling it that. And so we're, our, we're certainly going to, to be really, uh, really clear about that as well and, and calling it out from where we are, from where we stand. Calling it out. So it's basically pay no attention to the president who forgets where he is. And that means it's time to control the information. What I worry about, the misinformation. The disinformation, the stuff that's happened on social media uh, that people uh, repeat, and then the mainstream media, uh, rather than report it as it is, tend to repeat it. And you keep repeating this, uh, rather than explaining exactly what's happening, that could depress turnout. And in order to stop videos of Biden's decay from going viral, his campaign announced it was establishing something called a disinformation task force. Yeah, and these people call Trump an autocrat. A spokesman said that it was the responsibility of the social media companies and media allies to mitigate the impact of the videos. Now remember, these people call themselves the defenders of democracy, where they control the media. Again, they keep making mistakes. Shielding Biden from scrutiny is not going to make groceries more affordable. It's not going to make gas cheaper. And, and it's not even that Biden's a weak candidate. He, of course, he is. But he is literally, everyone watching has to know tonight, he is literally the best candidate they could find. Who thinks Barack Obama would have been uh, on stage last week with Clooney and Roberts with Biden unless he thought that Biden was their best chance? I'm telling you, if Democrats had someone better, someone they thought could win, they would have nominated him or her. They would have booted Biden. The problem isn't Biden. It's his policies. And what does this mean for the GOP? You know, I say keep on keeping on. The Trump campaign is showing excellent judgment and approach. Stay with the substance. They have a real record to run on, a record of success. And Biden, meanwhile, is just running away from his. And he's stuck on this continuous, unconvincing loop about Trump's character and the threat to democracy. It's not landing. 14 years ago, the Tea Party movement began as a frustrated response to two-party establishments that just wouldn't listen to the concerns of regular people. And nine years ago, Donald Trump took the leadership of that movement with the simple message, America first. 
Now, this is a new and long overdue Republican Party today. Thank goodness. And now this movement is the strongest it's ever been. We're gaining young people. We're gaining minority votes. And we're moving into purple and blue states as well. And Trump's in the lead despite everything they've thrown at him. It's driving them nuts. The Democrats know this, which is why they're in a frothy panic tonight. But their desperate measures and their desperate moments is not going to convince anyone. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.